Energetically, living is a space to help you elevate your energy, thoughts, and life, helping turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. Life is too short for normal. Jump out of the matrix and into your manifest life. Join us. Welcome, lovely souls, to Tarot Tuesdays on Magically Living. Join me, Rainbow Winds, as we embark on a magical journey through the captivating realm of tarot readings and beyond. With over 30 years of experience in reading tarot, oracle, and angel cards, I'm thrilled to be your guide on this mystical adventure. In our special three-part mini-series, we'll unravel the mysteries of the tarot, starting with the basics. But first, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the magic. And while you're at it, check out Magical Mondays on the Magically Living podcast for even more mystical insights. And get ready for DIY Thursdays, where we'll craft enchanting tools and spells together. Let's begin. Trust in the process of tarot reading and the wisdom of the cards. Understand that tarot is a tool for guidance and self-discovery, and the insights gained from a reading are meant to empower and inspire you on your journey. Embrace the mystery and magic of tarot, and enjoy the journey of exploration and growth it offers. With practice, patience and an open heart, you can develop your skills as a tarot reader and unlock the transformative potential of this ancient divinatory art. In a standard tarot deck, there are 78 cards, divided into two main categories, the Major Arcana and the Minor Arcana. Major Arcana. These cards represent significant life events, archetypal energies, and spiritual lessons. There are 22 cards in the Major Arcana, each with its own unique symbolism and meaning. Some of the key cards in the Major Arcana include the Fool, the Magician, the High Priestess, the Empress, the Emperor, the Hierophant, the Lovers, the Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, Wheel of Fortune, Justice, the Hanged Man, Death, Temperance, the Devil, the Tower, the Star, the Moon, the Sun, Judgment, the World. Minor Arcana. These cards represent everyday experiences, challenges, and influences. The Minor Arcana is further divided into four suits, each associated with a different element and aspect of life. Each suit contains 14 cards, including 10 numbered cards, ace through 10, and 4 court cards, page, knight, queen, and king. The four suits and their associated elements are cups, pentacles, or coins, swords, wands, or rods. Each card in the minor arcana carries its own unique symbolism and meaning, influenced by the suit it belongs to and its numerical value. Together, the major and minor arcana cards form a comprehensive system of symbols and archetypes that can be used for divination, self-reflection, and personal growth. The cup suit typically represents emotions, relationships, intuition, and the subconscious mind. The cards in this suit often deal with matters of the heart and emotional fulfillment. Each card portrays different aspects of emotional experience, ranging from joy and love to sadness and loss. Ace of Cups new beginnings in emotions, love, and intuition. Two of Cups, partnership, harmony, and mutual attraction. Three of Cups, celebration, friendship, and community. Four of Cups, discontent, apathy, and introspection. Five of Cups, loss, regret, and mourning. Six of Cups, nostalgia, innocence, and childhood memories. Seven of Cups, choices, fantasies, and illusions. Eight of Cups, Abandonment, Withdrawal, and Seeking Emotional Fulfillment. Nine of Cups, Contentment, Emotional Satisfaction, and Wish Fulfillment. Ten of Cups, Harmony, Happiness, and Emotional Fulfillment. The Pentacles suit is associated with material wealth, practical matters, the physical world, and earthly concerns. These cards often deal with issues related to finances, career, health, and the tangible aspects of life. Ace of Pentacles, New Opportunities, Prosperity, and Abundance. Two of Pentacles, Balance, Adaptability, and Juggling Priorities. Three of Pentacles, Collaboration, Teamwork, and Craftsmanship. Four of Pentacles, Stability, Security, and Holding on to Resources. Five of Pentacles, Hardship, Poverty, and Financial Struggle. Six of Pentacles, Generosity, Charity, and Sharing Wealth. Seven of Pentacles, Patience, Investment, and Long-Term Planning. Eight of Pentacles, Dedication, Craftsmanship, and Mastery. Nine of Pentacles, 
independence, luxury, and self-sufficiency. Ten of Pentacles, Legacy, Wealth, and Family Prosperity. Minor Arcana. Swords. The sword suit represents thoughts, communication, mental challenges, and conflicts. These cards often deal with issues related to intellect, decision-making, communication, and mental clarity. Ace of Swords, mental clarity, truth, and breakthroughs. Two of Swords, indecision, stalemate, and avoidance. Three of Swords, heartbreak, sorrow, and emotional pain. Four of Swords, rest, recuperation, and contemplation. Five of Swords, conflict, defeat, and betrayal. Six of Swords, transition, moving on and finding peace. Seven of Swords, deception, sneakiness, and evasion. Eight of Swords, restriction, feeling trapped, and self-imposed limitations. Nine of Swords, anxiety, nightmares, and mental anguish. Ten of Swords, betrayal, ruin, and hitting rock bottom. Minor Arcana, wands, or rods. The wand suit is associated with inspiration, creativity, ambition, and spiritual growth. These cards often deal with matters related to energy, passion, action, and initiative. Ace of Wands, inspiration, new opportunities, and potential. Two of Wands, planning, ambition, and personal vision. Three of Wands, expansion, exploration, and looking ahead. Four of Wands, celebration, harmony, and homecoming. Five of Wands, conflict, competition, and struggle for dominance. Six of Wands, victory, recognition, and public acclaim. Seven of Wands, defensiveness, standing your ground and overcoming challenges. Eight of Wands, swiftness, rapid progress, and communication. Nine of Wands, resilience, perseverance, and guarding against adversity. Ten of Wands, burden, responsibility, and feeling overwhelmed. Each card in the Minor Arcana carries its own unique energy and symbolism, offering insights into various aspects of life and human experience. When combined with the Major Arcana cards, they create a rich tapestry of meanings and possibilities for tarot readings and personal exploration. Tarot cards and playing cards share a common ancestry, and as a result, there are some similarities between them. Historically, playing cards actually predate tarot cards. Emerging in China during the Tang Dynasty, 618-907 AD, and spreading to Europe by the 14th century. Tarot cards, on the other hand, originated in Europe around the mid 15th century. Here's how tarot cards relate to playing cards. Similar structure. Both tarot cards and playing cards have suits and numbered cards. Tarot decks have four suits, cups, pentacles, swords, and wands. Similar to the four suits in a standard deck of playing cards, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Each suit in tarot corresponds roughly to a suit in playing cards, although the symbolism and meanings may differ. Court cards. Both tarot decks and playing card decks include court cards representing different ranks or personalities. In tarot, the court cards typically include the page, knight, queen, and king for each suit. In a standard deck of playing cards, these roles are often represented as the jack, queen, king, and sometimes the joker. Numbered cards. Both tarot decks and playing card decks include numbered cards, ranging from ace to ten. These cards represent various levels of energy or circumstances associated with their respective suits, differences in structure and purpose. While tarot cards and playing cards share some similarities in structure, they serve different purposes. Tarot cards are primarily used for divination, self-reflection, and spiritual exploration, whereas playing cards are designed for games and entertainment. Tarot cards also include an additional set of cards known as the Major Arcana, which are absent in standard playing card decks. Despite these similarities and differences, some people use playing cards for divination purposes in a manner similar to tarot readings. This practice is known as cartomancy. In cartomancy, each playing card is assigned meanings and interpretations based on its rank, suit, and the querent's question or intention. While playing cards lack the intricate symbolism and imagery of tarot cards, they can still offer insights and guidance when used in a divinatory context. In summary, while tarot cards and playing cards share some commonalities, they have distinct origins, structures, and purposes. Tarot cards are primarily used for divination and spiritual exploration, whereas playing cards are designed for games and entertainment.
However, both types of cards can be used in a divinatory practice like cartomancy, albeit with differences in interpretation and symbolism. Join us next week as we finish the three-part mini-series by learning how playing cards can be used for your divination, and we will finish it off with a reading. With feedback from all you, I have been requested to do celebrity readings, so vote who you would like a reading for in the comment section. Looking forward to next week. Until then, keep living magically, Rainbow Winds.